Hi everyone, and this is, will be daily video 100, and this is the last one out of the 100, of course. As far as I know, I haven't skipped a single day. Like I mentioned, I had sometimes, uh, I think I had two videos in which I had n uh, no sound, and uh, after uploading it, I, I only realized that there was no sound, so I had to remove those and uh, re-upload something else, but uh, technically the upload part was there. Uh, so I think this is uh, still kind of counts. Um, and so what is this big weird bunch of stuff here? Uh, this is in fact um, um, a bunch of transcripts of Gib versus Gib action. And this uh, these are a hundred thousand hands that uh, I got uh, I, I got sent. Uh, this is by uh, Lordy, he's a viewer now and an ex-partner of mine and a fan of the channel. Thanks, I think he will be uh, also online sometimes playing with me. Um, we haven't played in, I don't know, 10 years or, or more. But, um, so you always get like the distribution and, uh, and the play and some alerts and stuff. So uh, there's a lot of data there and I only started looking at it now and uh, I have some interesting uh, findings already so um, let's try to look at this um, and the question is how good good is Gib actually what I also need to add is that this is not the exact v version of Gib that you see um, online so you uh, if you log into BBO now it's not going to be the exact same Gib. Uh, this is an older version, but I think these versions don't really change that much. So um, I think maybe it's okay to just assume that uh, nothing changed and, uh, you know, la, le, la plus ça change, la plus c'est la même chose, uh, and just uh, apply whatever you see here um, to your game with Gib, or if not, then you can just say like this is not about Gib, this is about the geometry of bridge and maybe I can try to explain to you later what I mean by this. So how, how good is Gib actually? So I got sent this 98,700 Gib versus Gib hands. Uh, there were about 1,500 pass outs and uh, about 200 Grand Slams, that's pretty cool. And you can see some um, some of these uh, frequencies so this is just a final contract I'm ignoring uh, of course I'm in the way it's pretty u usual um, so of course lower level contracts are quite common the three most common contracts I think everybody will uh, guess it's three no trump four spades and four hearts and um, for example weird contracts like uh, well four no trump for example is quite rare it, it's only in some Abandoned slam try, five no trump is very very unlikely, and five of a minor is a little more likely than five of a major, for example. So that all, that all makes sense. Uh, the seven level is quite rare. Um, so one thing that I could ask here is, how good is Gibbs game bidding? So if you just look at, can you make game and did you bid game? Not looking at whether or not you made game. I'm not even looking at whether or not you bid the, the right game. Only like, did you bid a game when you ha you have game on? And uh, this is for various reasons. For example, just uh, to simplify um, matters and also to distinguish between playing the hand and bidding the hand. So it's one way of uh, looking at it. And this is just constructive auction. So we're not looking at saves or anything like that. And uh, this is the so-called confusion matrix where you have four different rates. And um, so for example, when game makes, then 92.5% of the time you also bid it. So the true positive rate is 92.5%. And uh, the false negative rate, so when you did not bid game, but you could have made it, that's only 7.5%. So that's very nice. Now, if no game makes, actually Gibbs still bids game about 57% of the time and uh, doesn't bid game in 42% of the time. So a little too aggressive, the um, false positive rate is a little too high. Again, not asking whether or not Gib can, uh, Gib did make it or did let it make, it's just whether or not they bid it when they could make a game. 
Um, what about the slam bidding? It's kind of the opposite of the previous slide. So uh, whenever no slam makes, then uh, Gib almost always uh, correctly uh, stays out of it. So 98.1% of those hands, uh, Gib stays out. And uh, if slam does make, then uh, Gib only bids about 40% of them and misses 60%. So um, this f um, high false negative rate means that it's a little too conservative. But of course here, uh, now we might get into the discussion that I will get into later, is whether or not you're supposed to be in slam. Like, can you make it once you bid it just because it's double dummy makeable? So maybe uh, actually at, at higher levels, declarer has a very hard time to replicate double dummy results. Um, and finally, there is also the grand grand slam bidding. If no grand slam makes, then uh, Gib almost always stays out of it, which is fine. It's just that uh, finding these grands uh, is a very hard task for Gib. So the false negative rate, so the um, is about ninety six percent. So Gib only finds about four percent of the slams in which uh, uh, Gib could have made grand. So it's hugely too conservative. But again. Uh, um, it could be that you're in some grand slam in which you have a bunch of different finesses you take, you can take, and then if you're a double dummy, then you can just take the one that that happens to sit, or uh, drop the stiff king, or drop the double ten queen, or whatever. So uh, we have to be very careful in um, uh, analyzing this stuff. But so far so good. So uh, what we found is uh, that Gib is quite aggressive in game bidding, but quite conservative in slam bidding, but and very very conservative in grand grand bidding, mm, which is honestly more or less exactly what I would want a robot to do. So uh, it's it's what I would tell all my partners or all my students uh, to do. So um, be a little adventurous when bidding game, but stay very very cautious when bidding slam or grand. Um, a lot of these slams, like I probably mentioned, a lot of these slams uh, are, uh, even if you say like this is a very good slam, in the end if you multiply some um, probabilities it will maybe be 60% or 70%, uh, which is obviously something that you would want to bid, but uh, you have a bunch of slams that are pretty much 0%, so those are the bad slams, so bad contracts uh, can, can get very very bad, but the good contracts never get super super good. This is just, uh, it's a heuristic, it's not exactly the case, but uh, it's um, one thing that you should maybe worry about a little. Um, so what about Gib play versus double dummy? So we bid to a contract, we're not gonna evaluate bidding anymore, it's just about the play. So we're in some contract now, and the question is, how does Gibbs declare our play fair against double dummy. So, of course, um, uh, Gib, when Gib is declaring, the defenders are also not playing double dummy. So this is more about uh, comparing the single, dis um, single dummy results with uh, double dummy results. So single dummy meaning that uh, it's actually what happened at the table and the double dummy is what should have happened kind of. So um, the important measure here is the M difference, let's say, uh, with respect to double dummy. So you could have, um, if defense messes up, r roughly speaking, then uh, um, the single dummy result will be higher. So this triangle here means that um, defense kind of messed up and the bottom triangle means that uh, declare messed up. So. Um, defense got a better score than they deserved, kind of. And if we add, add all these uh, results up, I mean, this is just a bunch of points. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but I, I just wanted to show you how um, the, um, the raw data looks. So these are obviously some parse score hands. This is non-vulnerable games. These are vulnerable games. These are non-vulnerable and vulnerable slams, I guess. These are non-vulnerable grands. Ah, no, sorry. These are just non-vulnerable non -vulnerable, uh, slams. Then these are non-vulnerable slams. Sorry, vulnerable slams are non-vulnerable grands, and those would be just the vulnerable grands. And the ne negative values here, I always put, uh, put in um, terms of the um, 
in terms of what uh, declarer is supposed to do so um, um, it's from declarer's point of view so these are very nicely clumped together uh, in like you know 500 800 1100 we, we all know this uh, <laughs> these numbers those of us who like to preempt quite aggressively right um, yeah so these are the numbers and now so if i just take the, the entire data set the way they are hundred thousand hands then uh, this is about uh, 0 0.26 imps per board versus double dummy so the declare has a tiny edge about a quarter of an imp and the average match point is about 53 percent versus double dummy so these are quite small differences uh, and we would be uh, forgiven to, to think that uh, this is actually fine so um, you can use double dummy results to stand in for single dummy results. Um, I should also say, of course, this is now Gib versus Gib. It's not humans versus humans, which obviously has a drawback. But on the other hand, I would also say like this at least is a very, very controlled experiment where you have the exact same opponents play 100,000 boards against each other, which is not very easy to do. So if I just downloaded some data from club play or regional play or national play or whatever, it will be very difficult to know um, who is playing against whom, like what are the levels, like what's going on. This is from some pairs games in which uh, you have good good pairs exploiting bad pairs and uh, or the other way around, or is it like uh, a team match where you have two evenly matched pairs trying to uh, figure out what what the others are doing. So this is a very tricky situation, and in a way, this is the one one of the best things you can do to try to understand how bridge works is just to have Gib play against each other, play against itself, and try to understand uh, those results. So uh, I'm not actually sure. So human against humans would also be interesting, but you couldn't get so many uh, boards. or And especially even if you got so many boards, you would never be sure uh, who's playing against who. And now I'm just repeating myself, obviously. So anyway, so let's try to understand uh, some subsets of the data. So obviously, um, if we look at the 100,000 hands together, then pretty much there is no difference, right? So what about uh, this declare edge versus level of the contract? So I'm looking at the match point and the imp imps difference. And in both cases, we can see that the imp declare edge is dropping. So um, in terms of imps, on the one level, the Declare has an imp edge of about 0 0.7 imps. And on the seven level, it's uh, almost exactly reversed. It's minus 0 0.5. And you, you see kind of like a gradual decrease. And uh, here uh, on the four level where you would often play, so three or four level, actually the declare edge is close to the, this average of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 imps. So um, uh, this is something that I've mentioned on, on video before, but I haven't shown you numbers and I didn't have those numbers yet. <laughs> so this is kind of intuitive. So uh, when you're in a lower level, then de defense has a lot of um, um, decisions to, to take. So um, they need to find some accurate switch or uh, to uh, keep their high cards if declare is running some suit or something. And um, on the higher level, de defense doesn't really have that many decisions and please don't say, <laughs> don't uh, misconstrue this. Like I, I, I don't mean that this never happens, but it's generally speaking, defense has less things to do. So fewer things to worry about. And it's often like declare who needs to find the Trump queen or to figure out which squeeze to play for. And then defense usually, at least in the first few tricks, doesn't have so much uh, to worry about. Can, can just follow suit more or less. Maybe, maybe false card or whatever. So this is at least, to, to first approximation, defense has um, um, more decisions to take at a lower level contracts than in a, in a higher level contract. Of course, the stakes are higher at higher, higher level contracts. That's definitely true. But still, um, this kind of makes sense that um, if defense has had a lot of uh, opportunities to mess up, then when defense is playing single dummy, especially Gibbs don't really do signals. So that's definitely a difference, but let's ignore that for now. Um, at lower levels, then uh, you'll be struggling in defense in single dummy. And uh, higher higher levels, maybe uh, Declare will be struggling because Declare will not be able to drop the Queen Doubleton offside and so on. Um, 
Yeah, so what else can we look at? One, another thing, of course, now we looked at level. Now what about denomination? Um, so the black one is tr no trumps, and the other ones are uh, suits, kind of color-coded by their actual uh, uh, colors. So red and blue are uh, hearts and spades. And um, I would say just like very, very generally speaking, and this is just plotted as, as a function of match points, is that there is not, not much difference between no trumps and... Uh, and um, and different suits. I mean, maybe maybe you see something. For example, I see that here in the four level, there's quite a big difference between minors and majors because um, obviously when majors are there, then it's it's game. So maybe you kind of stretch to bid it, and that that has some implications which I can't really figure out here. But uh, I, I I guess you can see that there there is some some something there, and maybe there is something interesting, but. Overall, I would say that there is not much difference. Like, no trumps are not much easier for defense than declare or the other way around, and it doesn't really matter on the on the level. Um, one more thing is um, this: we often hear this. Don't tell, tell declare how to play the hand. So this is a way to uh, try to shut up uh, students, like to tell them. No, don't double so light or don't overcall so light because you will tell declare how to play the hand. And this is something that I hate hearing and I hate saying. And I'm, and you will never hear me say it except for this one slide. <laughs> um, if I group together the hands by whether or not the opponents intervene, it can be even just one double. It can even be one spade, four spades, double, pass, 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 or whatever. It can be just one call by the opponents, which wasn't a pass. Um, then it actually seems that this helps declare. So the contested auctions declare has a consistently higher performance compared to double dummy than if uh, defenders are uh, passing throughout. And of course, you can uh, ask some questions. Um, well, but doesn't it help defenders if they know what their partner has? Yeah, it does, but at least uh, defenders always had something to do go on, like. Uh, if the opponents bought the hand, they ha they will have made at least one bid somewhere, right? And usually it will be a little more than one. So it, they will have some idea of what's going on. But um, if declare are, is declare after a constructive auction, then they have literally no idea or almost literally no idea what their opponents have. So the opponents could have a seven card club suit or whatever, and you just don't know um, how... Um, uh, how how they got there and what's going on. So um, mm, that that's that's kind of a thing. Like like declare could be in complete darkness uh, in an uncontested auction, and uh, there it will be difficult. So that's why the black line is uh, below the red line, and uh, defenders can maybe get some extra information uh through a contested auction but still uh they all they always start from they always have a head start kind of because they always know something about declarer's hand um so um so yeah um if you want to save this whatever like the biggest chasm you would have is maybe here from 49 to 55 which is i mean it is six percent uh per board that's that's not bad this is just um now match points for simplicity, but um, you can see that there is something to this idea. Uh, but I I will never listen to it. I don't really care. I will always just contest the auction. It's always very annoying. So uh, yeah. So finally, oh yeah, I wanted to show you something. Um, I was looking at these hands where Gib is in five no Trump and uh, I. <laughs> I wanted to show you two of these auctions, and this seems to be a recurring pattern. I, I've never seen Gib in uh, five no Trump, and th these were actually eleven hands out of a hundred thousand, so that's not too bad. It's almost. I mean, it's it's about one hand in ten thousand, so I, I I can't complain that much. Uh, this is one of them. Um, one no Trump. Two diamonds, both majors. It's a little aggressive, but whatever. He some for for some reason passed. We will never find out why. And now he's bids three diamonds, three hearts, four spades. And now West just decided to ask for key cards. Four no Trump was key cards. I didn't. I had to enter these auctions by hand because I don't have the converter yet. So I would need to write it myself. 
And uh, now East bit 5 no Trump, which showed uh, 2 with a void, and now West panicked and just <laughs> passed. But this is not even that bad. Um, this is the really funny one. So again, one club, one heart. One on Trump, four clubs is Gerber. So it asked for aces. West now showed three. And now he's forgot what, what the auction was and just said, oh wait, my partner bid key cards. <laughs> So East now answered even number plus avoid and now West was completely confused and just passed. So these 11 hands are all kind of bidding misunderstandings and in fact I had to, uh, um, from this plot, um, if you really zoom in, you will notice that I even removed them. So this five no Trump hands, uh, I, they were just a little too ridiculous for me. So <laughs> just... <laughs> Uh, I, I just hit them, but uh, yeah, anyway, it had some weird declare edge as well, but they were all like super weird contracts, so I didn't really care about them. So yeah, so Gib is actually uh, pretty good, I would say, especially the game bidding was quite impressive, I would say. Bits 92% of the making games. Um, and uh, yeah, it's true that it uh, bids sixty percent of the non non making games too, but that's that's still fine, I would say. Um, and uh, and yeah, this I I like this idea which I haven't seen done. Well, no, I've I've seen it done in some forum posts with live bridge, but uh, I haven't seen shown on Gib that actually the declare edge kind of reverses. So at lower levels, declare has an edge, and at higher levels, defense has an edge. Um, so again, you can never have an edge over double dummy, but it's 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 just simply because your opponents have a bigger uh, um, handicap is why you have an edge, kind of if if that makes sense. So, declare having the edge means that defense messes up too too often, and uh, defense having an edge means that declare messes up too often compared to purely double dummy results. Okay, so what else will happen on this channel? On this channel, I will probably take a few days off if that's okay with everyone and uh, then I will play in this bridge fight club five and I think what I will do is stream everything and upload everything no exceptions uh, and no matter how bad I'm doing or how, how well I'm doing I don't know I'm just gonna upload everything um, other than that these educational stuff take a little time to prepare so I will probably not have any time um, make sure to to write in the comments if you have any ideas to what for what to do uh, uh, with this data set. So I have a hundred thousand Gib versus Gib hands. Uh, this is again, it's not the exact same version. I think it's version twenty one, and I think we're at version thirty five or something. But I'm pretty sure it's actually not that far. Um, but if you have some idea of what what to do with it, I have some ideas maybe about opening leads, like how Gib leads or. Maybe Gib gives count. I, I never really figured that out, but maybe Gib does do that. Who knows? So just ask, uh, just ask and I can uh, look into stuff, but maybe not right now. Probably until March, I'm not going to do any kind of serious bridge stuff. And in March, uh, who knows? But yeah, so the daily video series is actually stopping here. <laughs> I will stop calling them daily video. I will probably for the next few days, I will make it a point of not uploading anything, even if maybe I'm streaming something on Twitch, there will be nothing on this channel. Uh, I hope everybody's happy, <laughs> happy with that. <laughs> um, so I started November 3rd, I guess. Uh, so yeah, November 3rd, I think. Um, and uh yeah there were like so a, a, a lot in the beginning i played against bots then i played a little bit with emil uh then some of these defensive problems i had some pairs with klaus back when i still played bridge in germany <laughs> it feels like a year ago well it was last year but whatever and then i started going into this pos positive defense i really like that book um then this how good is your bridge which was kind of like this intermediate book uh which I, it's, it still caused me some problems so not to be like super uh cocky about this but yeah it was mm, 
I would say a little bit below my level, but that's fine. I mean, I should have gotten it all correct, but I, I got around 70% on defense, I think, and 90% on declarer play or something. So that already tells you something about me. Um, some of this prime stuff, um, the speed cube was not a daily video. It was just a random video. Uh, what else? Coded miners, yeah, and then I had this bunch of uh, vid uh, videos, right, with uh, actual bidding stuff. Mm. What was it? Imp ah, learning Polish club, improving two clubs, learning switch. Oh, that was a nice one, I think. Negative doubles, yeah, this is a little weird, but I, th I still think it's interesting. Coded miners, super interesting, learned, very good system, actually. Simplifying two over one auctions. Yeah, this is the um, this high reverse, which I think is still interesting. This was a rambling video. I I like it. This is a, a topic that's kind of near and dear to my heart, but uh, um, it was not very structured. I didn't prepare a, a slide for it. Symmetric relay also kind of hard to learn, but uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, pretty good. I mean, the system is good, and the video yeah was probably okay. Same and transfers. Yeah, this is kind of like a more or less clickbait but it's still correct uh it's it, it still kind of resembles statement and transfers and it's easy to remember that way making up a relay system i i wonder how how uh how people found that one getting rid of four suit forcing this is already now pretty recent right yeah these cheap transfers are pretty good there was a question in the um, in the comments by reiner um how this compares to xyz um, I, I didn't uh, go into that, uh, maybe I can go through it at some point, but yeah, not not right now. Uh, two not-ram game forcing, this takeout double, I love this takeout double scheme, highly recommended. I think you should look into it. Uh, jumping just shows five and uh, it was solve a lot of headaches. Uh, and this uh, Gwyn's two not Trump is... <laughs> Highly debatable, but yeah, that's about it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking around. I don't know how many you watched. They're they're all gonna stay there. Um, get them while while they're hot. And uh, yeah, so I somehow managed to do it. Thanks for watching. We'll not see you tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> maybe see you on Twitch. Ciao.